Hi there, Chris from Stone Age Gamer here, and welcome back to Stone Age Countdown. Tetris. Tetris is great. Everyone loves Tetris, but for as great and perfect as the original is, there's a heck of a lot of fun to be had with Tetris spin-off games. For this countdown, we're talking only about games that take the fundamental Tetris experience and change it in some fun and meaningful way. That means, for as great as they are, stuff like Tetris Attack and Tetris Fear are off-limits. So without further ado, here are the top five Tetris spin-off games. Number 5, 3D Tetris. 3D Tetris is an odd duck. It's basically Weltris, but on Virtual Boy, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Weltris is awesome, but in favor of only listing games with the word Tetris in the title, I decided to go with 3D Tetris instead. That and I love the Virtual Boy, and 3D Tetris has some great music. If you've never played it before, 3D Tetris is exactly what it sounds like. Instead of making lines, you have to make squares by filling in a full floor of the well while looking down from the top. 3D Tetris does a neat job of making sure you're always able to know where the block you're going to be placing is by having the camera rotate around while you play. The 3D effect is nice, not that you can see it on this screen, and it's a genuinely fun game. You can also rotate the blocks on any axis you want, which adds a fun layer of strategy to the mix. It's an all-around slower game than the more proper Tetris experiences, but it's still a pretty good game. Number 4, Tetris 2. Tetris 2 bills itself as a sequel to Tetris, which is kind of a stretch. Actually, Tetris 2 answers the question, what if you crossed Tetris with Dr. Mario? The result is a really fun puzzle game that still somehow doesn't quite live up to either of its predecessors. Tetris 2 follows the same basic premise of Dr. Mario. There's a pattern of colored blocks on the screen, and you have to clear them all to complete the stage. In order to do this, you need to line up three or more of the same color in a row. What makes this Tetris, though, is that instead of two colored pills, the game drops multicolored tetraminos. I think that's how you say that word, tetraminos. Anyway, this makes the process of keeping your screen clean much more difficult. Fortunately, there are also these flashing blocks that can eliminate all of one colored block in a single move, which can also be done by achieving this game's version of a Tetris. There's also an excellent puzzle mode in the Super Nintendo version. While on paper the game sounds like a blast, it just barely misses the mark. It's by no means a bad game, but it is on the lower echelon of Tetris spin-offs for sure. Number 3, Tetris Blast. Now this game is a blast. Released in Japan as Super Bombless, it was rightfully given the Tetris name in North America. This one plays pretty much exactly like classic Tetris, except with an explosive twist. Blocks fall into a well, and the goal is to make lines, but when you make the lines, they don't disappear. Instead, they work as triggers. Some blocks that fall contain bombs, and when you complete a line, any bombs contained within said line will explode and knock out various blocks surrounding them. If you make a single line, the explosions will only cover a single line, but the more lines you make, the bigger the explosions. And if you manage to line up four bombs in a square, you create a super bomb, which will just about guarantee a screen clear in satisfying fashion. This game is so much fun, and such a clever twist on the classic Tetris gameplay. Its lack of modern ports is absurd. Tetris Blast is truly a blast. Number 2, The New Tetris. This here is not only one of the best Tetris games out there, but I'd argue it's one of the best games on the Nintendo 64. This one can absolutely be played as just a standard Tetris game if you really want to. And as a standard Tetris, it's great. It's got a four-player mode, a really cool Seven Wonders of the World motif, and an absolutely killer soundtrack. But what makes this a non-standard game of Tetris is the introduction of blocks, which really changes up how you play the game. In this game, if you can make a perfect square out of four tetraminos, they will congeal together to form a block. If you do this using two different kinds of blocks, you get a silver block. And if you do it with four of the same block, you get a gold. Any lines made with a silver block are worth five lines, and anything with gold is worth ten. Now the other big change comes in the form of spin moves. As far as I know, these were officially introduced here, but they work a little differently than in more standard Tetris games. Instead of just giving you more points and or dealing massive damage to opponents in multiplayer games, in the new Tetris, executing a spin move causes every block underneath to fragment into single squares and collapse in on themselves. This is a great Hail Mary move if you're close to dying, but it comes at the expense of any blocks you've created. 
the introduction of these two mechanics fundamentally changes the way you look at the pieces and how to plan your strategies. There is a lot of risk and reward in forming the blocks, and combining them with the standard Tetris rules is challenging and fun. This game is a masterpiece. That it's still exclusive to Nintendo 64 is a tragedy. Number 1. Tetris DS for as great as the new Tetris is, nothing quite tops Tetris DS. In terms of its standard mode, it literally is just Tetris. Nothing fancy, just a really well-polished, bare-bones Tetris game. But this game takes the top spot thanks to its various other modes, which are absolutely brilliant. First, we have Mission Mode. In this mode, you play Tetris as you normally would, except the game gives you specific objectives that must be cleared in order to move on. So if the game says, make a line using a square block, you can make as many lines as you want, but you won't progress until you've made a line using a square. It's also Zelda themed, which makes it that much cooler. Push mode might actually be the most brilliant mode of the bunch. It's a multiplayer mode where you are literally playing on the opposite end of your opponent's Tetris well. The more lines you make, the less space your opponent has to play in. But if you get two skilled players against one another, things can get really intense. Since you're playing in the same well from different sides, there's no bottom unless you create one. So it's really easy to find yourself in a situation where placing a block in order to create a line yourself can also open up counterattack possibilities from your opponent. I cannot put this game's brilliance properly into words. Puzzle mode is similar to what you'd find in Tetris 2. There are a number of blocks on the screen and you have a specific set of blocks to clear the whole thing with. It's neat. Catch Mode, which is Metroid-themed and therefore awesome, is almost like a cross between Tetris and Katamari Damacy. This one's especially weird because it's literally the same thing as an obscure Game Boy Color game called Clustar, except with much better presentation and it's included as a game mode instead of being its own thing. There doesn't seem to be any sort of connection between Clustar's developer and this game as far as I know, so the whole thing strikes me as super odd. Did Nintendo just, like, steal that game's concept? Regardless, however it came to be, you control a single block that Tetris pieces stick to. You want to grab as many as you can to make square shapes. Once you do, they disappear and bring everything left closer to the center. Keep doing this until you can't, and that's it. Finally, there's Touch, which is kind of like reverse Tetris. All the blocks are already there when you begin, and you have to slide them around to make them fall into place. Be warned, this mode may not look like much, but it is addictive! You use the touchscreen to slide the blocks around, and you can double tap them to make them rotate. It's unreasonably fun, and it's balloon fight themed, which is awesome. With all these alternate Tetris modes, Tetris DS is king of the hill. And there you have it, those are my top 5 Tetris spin-offs, all of which are super fun to play and well worth tracking down if you're a Tetris fan looking for something a little bit different to play. Thanks for watching everyone, if you liked what you saw here today please follow, comment, like, subscribe, share, and let us know down in the comments what are your favorite Tetris games. Did I miss anything? If so, let us know, and thanks again. On behalf of all of us here at Stone Age Gamer, keep playing games.